Hi, welcome to Matt's Garage. Today we're going to be fine-tuning the carburetor on this 1972 International Scout. It's got an Edelbrock AVS-2 carburetor, 650 CFM, on top of a Chevy 350 with Vortec heads and a slightly hot cam. I'm not happy with the way it's running. I've taken Gavin out in it, I've taken Niobe out in it. It's okay, it puts around okay, and it's okay at wide open throttle, but it's just okay. So I'm gonna address that okay and try to get it tuned to where it really, really is responsive and doesn't seem to lean out at all, which is what I think it's doing right now. Before I turn the truck on and bring it up to temperature, which you have to do before you tune it, let me explain the symptoms and I would love to hear any feedback you guys have. I have the initial timing on this thing set to like at 18 with a very low vacuum advance, like four or five degrees. And then the mechanical advance is 20 degrees, which is pretty standard. So all in, I'm at like 38, and it runs okay. If I drop the initial advance down to 12, it seems way more responsive here at no load, but it just got no guts as soon as you put any load on it. So let me tell you what steps I'm taking. First thing I did, I changed the position of the accelerator pump. From the factory, this comes in the center position. I moved it up one hole closer to the throttle body, and that's supposed to give it more leverage and more of a shot. I'm hoping that fixes it. The second thing is I wanna change the power valve springs. And that's what most of this episode is gonna be spent doing. Plus I'll have to reset the timing and all that. I'm gonna to try to take it down to the sort of standard 12 degrees base, eight degrees um, vacuum, eight to 10 degrees vacuum, and the normal 20 degrees mechanical. So let's, uh, so let's fire this thing up, warm it up, and back it out a little bit so I don't die. obviously idling low, so I'm going to bring the idle up a little bit. I don't know if you can see down there, but it's right at around 17, 18. I'm going to back it down. Okay, there it's at 10. First, that second gold line is 10. Now it's going to be super responsive. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to turn in the idle mixture screws all the way, then back them out one and a quarter turn. Okay, we're going to come out half a turn. Half a turn. That might have been too much. We might have 18 pounds, but we'll do that again. We'll go back in. About half a turn. Half a turn. Half a turn. Okay, I'm losing vacuum there, so I'm gonna go back in half a turn. Same with this side. I'm gonna go in half a turn. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna go out half a turn. I'm gonna go out another half a turn. Right there, I'm about 19. It seems to be idling smoothly. So I'm gonna back it off a little bit. Just so I have an AB comparison, I'm gonna take it for a drive, really get a feel for that lean pop so that I have something to compare it to after I change the power springs. Actually, it's driving pretty well. See, there's a little stumble when you just tip in. You're wide open.
All right, let's talk about that ride. So it felt better everywhere except at tip-in. So with the normal 10 degrees of base timing, plus about 10 degrees of uh, vacuum advance, uh, and the 20 degrees of mechanical, it feels great. I mean, that's exactly what you know, it feels like it should be. So I'm very happy with that, but I still have that tipping issue. That's what we're gonna to solve today. And the way we're gonna solve it is by replacing a spring. There's two of them, one on each side under this right here, okay? It's a Torx 15 bit, I believe. Yep. The way you tune it is with this 1464 kit from Edelbrock. It's got a series of springs. It comes with this chart on the back that you know, it tells you the spring color relative to the inches of mercury. What do I mean by inches of mercury? So that's vacuum, right? Um, and what's under here, open this up and I'll bring you in closer, but basically what's under here is the jet, um, the metering rod, sorry. And I can kind of pop this up and swing this out of the way and it just kind of rotates out of the way. There's a cup and a metering rod here. And underneath this silver cup is a spring, theoretically an orange spring. And vacuum pushes this down and that little golden rod goes through your jet way at the bottom of the carburetor. It's a long rod. And that's how these carburetors meter. The metering rod is a tapered, just like your finger, right? It's narrower at the tip and thicker up at the knuckle, right? So your, your jet orifice, uh, the metering rod sits in it. So the further down it is in the orifice, the less room for fuel to get by and the leaner your mixture. The more up it is, the more room around the tip of that, um, that metering rod and the more fuel can get into the orifice. Keep it clean, boys. What's holding that up is this spring the original spring, which is set to five inches of mercury. So how does that work? So that spring holds it down, right? High vacuum, it holds it down, makes it lean because you don't need a lot of fuel when you're in a high vacuum situation like idle or downhill cruising. When you step on the gas, you lose vacuum and it stops being able to suck that spring down and this lifts up and gives you more fuel. It's a really brilliant system because you can do a lot of tuning without having to open the top of the car. All you, you saw all I did was unscrew that and swing the door out of the way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and swap out the five, dig, uh, five inch um, mercury with the seven inch mercury. And what that does is it makes it so you gotta have seven inches of mercury to pull that me metering rod down, not five. Five's hardly any, right? So seven inches of mercury. And so basically it means that it pulls it out of the orifice sooner and you get more fuel put in. That's the bottom line. Why is it seven when you normally run 18 inches of mercury for a, you know, for a healthy engine? It's divided by two, right? So um, each side gets half of that vacuum. So seven or, and eight is the highest. So seven or eight, I think, is what this heavy truck with a bigger motor needs. I think that five inches of mercury is really set up for like the more 5.0 liter, you know, 300, 289 size engines. I think for a 350 with the, the Vortec heads high compression, I think it needs a little more spring. Uh, at the beginning of the episode, I talked about changing the accelerator pump shot. That's this one. It was in the second hole. You pull out this, what they call a Jesus clip, and then you pull it out and put it in the top hole, and that makes it more of a pump shot. Uh, it's no offense. I'm not trying to take the Lord's name in vain. Just, um, it's just that if you lose it, you're going to need his help. Let's see if I can film with one hand and pull this out with another. You see how it narrows down at the bottom there? So that's that setup. The vacuum sucks this down, forces that metering rod further into the jet. So I'm gonna pull out this, which is the orange um, theoretically orange one. And I'm going to take a picture of it so that I don't forget next to the other ones because the paint does come off with time. I'm going to pull the seven inch mercury ones out of here. 
There's two. So now I'm going to separate the two springs. Get off of there, you. So this goes back in here. Very simple. And I'm going to go drop that back in the hole on the other side. Alright, so that's in there. You push down the head, swivel the cover plate over, and then cinch it down. Just barely tight. It was barely tight to begin with. So don't like, don't go ratcheting super hard on this, okay? Do the same thing on the other side, and we're ready to go for a test drive. Now there there is one disadvantage to this I should have mentioned earlier. If you put in too much spring, okay, you're gonna give up fuel economy because it, it'll, you'll, you're, you'll fool your engine into thinking it's in power mode when it should be in cruising mode, okay? So there's a, there's a point of diminishing returns. So don't just automatically throw the biggest one in there. It's not, you know, you wanna put the right one in there. Air cleaner's back on. I'm gonna go for a test drive and I'll report back to you. Actually, that feels pretty good. Yeah, see, oh, there you go. Just, you, you can't, sorry. It doesn't come through on video, but there's definitely just a slight hesitation and tip it. See that? Lean pop. So on that test drive, I got a couple backfires on tip in, which I don't know if it's, that's kind of similar to the problem I was having before uh, when I had the timing at 10. So I'm gonna just up the timing to 12 and see if that solves the problem. I just went on another test drive. It seemed to really like that 12 degrees and about 10 degrees of vacuum. Um, yeah, I was giving it the beans and I got none of the hesitation or stumbling or anything. I do feel like there could be a little more power in the tip-in, so I'm gonna switch to that eight inch spring now. All right, one more test drive, then I gotta make pizza for the kids. No complaints about today at all. It was a great tuning day. I did end up ripping the Virgin Mary shifter off of the knob, so um, I'm gonna glue her back on because she's an important part of the Scout. That's about as far as I could take the tuning with the carb without getting into the jets or the metering rods. And I really don't wanna do that until I get an, either an air fuel meter on there or air fuel, excuse me, air fuel gauge on there, or I take it to a tuner to have it tuned with air fuel, because I can't really tell whether I'm rich or lean. Right now, it seems to be running quite well. I don't think I like this cam. It's a Lunati cam, and the operating range is like one to 5,000 RPM. And I really think I need more of a grunty, low-end zero to 4,000 RPM cam, but that's for another year. Right now it runs great and I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna keep tuning it as time goes on. Um, but for now, I'm pretty much done with the scout. The door cards are in, um, the interior is done. She's buttoned up and ready to go. I'm just waiting for summer to come so I can take the top off and go off-roading with Gavin. I wanted to do like a payoff video, but the weather is so crappy. Like going out and recording is just not interesting. Sometimes it's sunny, but it's still cold, and I really want to just do a proper payoff video. So I'll wait for the summer for that. Maybe after I get a winch on the front bumper. I don't know. You guys are spending all my money on the Bronco. So I will see you next time on the Bronco on Matt's Garage.